Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. Now, as all of you know, when we have our classic Macs or other old computers, we have these old SCSI drives, and unfortunately, they all die eventually. And most of the time, there's just no way to revive them. And so anyway, I'm going to uh, do something with the old hard drive. And I've heard about this and I've seen other people do this, so I thought I would do it myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to not this particular drive, because I've already started working on one, but we're going to uh, take it apart. And uh, I think it'd be pretty cool to make a clock out of it rather than just throwing it into garbage. At least that way you can look at the innards of it and it's a nice retro type of looking uh, clock. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so this is an old Apple SCSI hard drive. And this one, uh, I've already taken it apart. Uh, there's no chance of revival for it, unfortunately. Anyway, this is the board that goes on the back of it. And this used to be an Apple hard drive, SCSI, and you can see what it is. There used to be an 80 megabyte, 80 megabyte SCSI drive, 1992. And it's sad to see these things stop working because there'd be lots of information that might still be on them, but unfortunately, a lot of times you can't recover it as in this situation. So again, I've seen this done before. One of my YouTube friends also mentioned it. So I thought, you know what? Let's just try it for funsies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a clock. Now, what I've already done already is I've already drilled this on my drill press. So I drilled the hole out here on my drill press to get the bearing out of it. And that's this piece right here. The motor used to be in there, what was left of it. We drilled it out. That's what used to screw on there to hold the platter. And the motor went up to there. So the remains of the motor is right here, the windings of it. And the innards are over there. But anyway, this is uh, what we're going to do. We're going to make a clock out of this. Now, what I've done... And you can buy these very, very inexpensive clock movements. Runs on a AA battery. And that's going to go up through the back here, like so. Okay. And then uh, we're going to put the hands on it and numbers and stuff. And we'll get it all nice and displayed so it'll look pretty cool. And like I said, it'll be kind of neat to see something like that. It'll look good out here in the garage, or if you have a nice den or something like that, nice office, maybe you want something displayed. So at least it's functional. At least it's doing something rather than just going in a landfill. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this platter out because we need to put some numbers on it. I'm going to try not to get fingerprints on it. And then what we need to do is move this... Uh, reed head off of it all the way here and then we're probably going to lose this here because our hands won't be able to go around here and we're going to modify the hands too all right so i took the platter out of it and you can see what it looks like here this is the rest of the motor in there. there's a little circuit board that went in there this is the windings of the motor and you can say drilled out through the aluminum a big enough hole to fit that clock mechanism through on the back side of it there. This is the side we're going to uh, put our numbers on. Now I'm probably only going to put just the 12, the 6, the 3, and the, the, the 9 on it there. Okay, so I got the 3 on there. And I'm going to and the problem is there's no sticky stuff on the back, so I gotta use some type of adhesive to stick that on here. I'm just using my tweezers to manipulate it here. Use some flex glue on it here, right there. 
and uh, this stuff stays uh, rubbery. So anyway, we're going to get our little tweezers here. We're going to grab that. We're going to put some on the back over here. I thought about using super glue, but I think this will be actually a little bit less messier. So we're going to move that off of there like so. And I'm going to put just a little bit on the back here. All right, so we'll put this down here. There we go. Just kind of look at it here. All right, so we got the numbers stuck down on it. And I got a little mess over here, but that'll all rub right off. So it looks worse than what it is. But anyway, yeah, so I'm just going to put the four numbers on it because it's going to look too crowded if I put all those numbers on there. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to mount it inside the, uh, the case here. So we're going to put some flex glue and some spots here so that platter will stay on here so it won't move around. I'm just looking for the highest spots on here, and this looks like it's the highest spot right there. So we're just going to glob just a little bit on there. And it doesn't have to be neat. Uh, we want it to, to stay put. I don't want it coming off. So I'm just going to kind of put it right here in a couple little spots here. Right there. Now this stuff, uh, it never gets totally hard. It always stays rubbery. So it makes a good contact point. It's good for a lot of different materials. And we don't have to put a whole lot on here, but just, just a couple spots, just to, and that way uh, we can move it around. So when we put the clock movement in there, we can uh, center it up here. So I'm gonna be very careful with this here. I don't wanna to touch the front of it. I don't wanna bump the numbers here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drop this down in here, like so. Maybe. Let's try this again here. We gotta go down like this first. There we go. And we'll get it on here like so. Ooh, that just barely fits in there. So we're gonna put the mechanism in here. Like so, like that. And before I get too far on this here, I'm going to push this down just a little bit here. There we go. Now we get it. Now we get position there. Okay, so now we're going to put the clock movement in here, like so. And now we have to take, and we got to put a washer over this to hold that down. Then we got this little nut that we have to put on here. Pretty good there. Got that all mounted up in there. So now we just got to clean that uh, platter up and we'll put the little hands on it. And there we go. We got the hands on it there. I just have to clean it around those letters a little bit there. I have to let them dry before I can clean them up, but it cleans right off of alcohol. That's really the only spot right there where that nine is, but everything else looks pretty darn good there. It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. And uh, so you get the second hand. I left the second hand really long, so it sweeps right around the outside of the case there. It doesn't rub in anything. So now what we're going to do is now we're going to get real creative. We have to make a stand for it. And we're going to use the existing parts to make a stand for it. I think that'll be pretty cool. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this here for the base. I'm going to put some little rubber feet on this here. But I think that'd be pretty cool. And I thought maybe I'd put it like this so you could see that. So I thought maybe I might just... Um, do it like this 
and then we're going to put the circuit board down like this and kind of like maybe put it like that i think it'd be pretty cool kind of like that and that way there'll still be enough room to get in there to get the battery out so i'm thinking we might do that that'd be make a pretty neat looking stand there Or we could, or we could do it like this. Or we could do it, we could do it like that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, attach it like that, and then I'm going to put the circuit board down here low enough that way I can still change the battery and adjust the time if need be. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Well, there you go. We got it all finished. Looks pretty good. Let me uh, zoom in here so you can see it here. So there you have it right there. So this is all glued up. And then on the back here, we have the uh, circuit board there out of it. That's again, that's all attached, and that way we can get to the battery, change the battery, and do the time. But this is a great way to make an old SCSI drive instead of tossing it, making it useful. Who would not want that in their computer room? That's awesome. I think it's really cool, it came out really good. So, yeah, and um. And you can, again, you can see from the back here how it looks here. It's pretty good. We're just going to let that finish drying up overnight, but we're looking pretty good. I'm very happy how that turned out. And speaking of projects, PCB Way is a sponsor of our channel, and they can do some pretty incredible things like this. And they offer a variety of services like PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, flex rigid flex PCB, CNC machining, 3D printing, offering you the best value, fast turnaround, one-on-one -on -one assistance, truly a one-stop solution for PCB and assembly. So go to PCBWay.com and see what they can do for you. And I'm so glad to have them as a sponsor of the channel. They do wonderful things. They're always coming up with new products. So please go to PCBWay.com and check them out. See what they can do for you. So there we go. That's how you make an old SCSI drive into something useful again. So I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe and click that notification bell. We're on Twitter, Mastodon, and MeWe. So hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.